Sizing a lathe turn tenon with a radius gauge. For tools, project articles, drawings, and DVDs, please visit my website at AmericanFederalPeriod.com. Hello, I'm Rob Millar, and welcome to my shop. I'm making a copy of this iconic shaker candle stand, and of course that's going to require a tenon here at the top of the post that fits into what I call the subtop. And in the past I've made lathe turn tenons in a couple different ways. Probably the most universal way is to set a caliper to the proper diameter and then come in with the cutoff or parting tool and shape the tenon to the right size. But for me that's been kind of hit or miss. It's frequently resulted in a tenon that's oversized or undersized. Of course oversized is not too much of a problem but undersized is a bit of a problem. Now in the case of uh, this particular project and here's the post for the next one, this is going to be a wedged joint so a bit of inaccuracy is not a huge deal but I still like to have the fit as good as possible before the wedge is driven in. Then another method I've used that's resulted in more uniformity but not necessarily more precision is to use an open end wrench as sort of a no-go gauge. Now that has a couple issues with it. One, it's kind of dangerous to do it under power because the wrench is much wider than your parting tool so you have to make a big trench so to speak for it and if you were to do it under power the slightest little twist could cause that wrench to catch and pitch it right at the operator. Hardly a good happenstance. And wrenches are not precision tools. There's going to be quite a bit of variation and the chances of one matching your drill bit pretty small. So that's not been very successful. Recently I purchased a set of machinist radius gauges in order to use those for making uh, knuckle joints like you see on Pembroke or card tables where the pieces have to be pretty accurately shaped on their ends so that you get a gap-free, nice-fitting joint. And I'll show these up close here in just a moment. And there's another way that I used once a long time ago, and that's a fixture that fits on your parting tool that's kind of like got a finger that comes out and creates what is essentially a no-go gauge right on the tool. Now, it's been a while since I used that, but I wasn't terribly impressed with it. It was a little bit cumbersome for me. But the radius gauges have, have worked quite well when I hit on the idea of using them to make the tenon. So let's take a close-up look of those. Here is the set of radius gauges that I purchased. They're from Lufkin. I believe they were made in the 1960s. They're constructed of stainless steel, which I find desirable. But they're available from a wide range of manufacturers, both current and used, and in a wide range of prices. If you're patient, you can pick them up on eBay very inexpensively. I paid uh, $16, including postage, for this set. And this particular set I think is the most useful for woodworking. It runs from 1 32nd up to a half inch by 30 seconds of an inch. Now some of these smaller sizes have limited utility in a woodworking setting. There's also a set that goes from I believe 1 64th to 17 64th by 64th. I don't see a lot of utility of that in a woodworking setting. And then there's a set that goes from a half to one inch radius by 16th, which I can see some use for that, but this is going to cover the vast majority of woodworkers' needs. And the individual gauges themselves are, are quite useful. Uh, you can check a concave radius here, or a convex radius, which is what we're going to use. You can check a corner radius here, a partial radius here, or a fillet here. So let's go over the lathe and see it in actual use. Here at the lathe I have the post securely fastened in the lathe and everything dogged down well. I have it turned roughly to a round shape. I've made a mark where I want the shoulder to end for the tenon. I have a set of calipers here set to 1 and a 16th so I can get it close to the proper size. I'm going to use a diamond formed parting tool. I think this is a nominal uh, quarter inch wide and I have rolled up my sleeves so that there's no possibility of me getting tangled up in the machine. I'll start the machine and uh, turn the tenon.
I personally have no problem using the caliper under power at the lathe along with the cutoff tool. If that causes you concern, then don't do it, but uh, I find it safe enough. Now what I did was is I roughed it out in stages. I went about part about halfway in, then removed most of the waste with a gouge real quick, then went back and got it close to the right size again, removing most of the waste with a gouge. And now I can come in with the uh, radius gauge. And what I'm going to do is going to place it behind the work like this and have it so that just this edge is rubbing. That way it's unlikely to really catch on there. And then as the tool goes into the work, there will be a point at which you'll see it just nest right up against this cutout here and you'll know that you have the tenon to a very precise dimension. Now you'll see that there's a little bit of uh, some steps in there and that's where the actual radius gauge is almost acting like a cutting tool. I want to go back with a uh, skew chisel or if you're not comfortable with a skew chisel you could use a scraper. But I'm just going to come in here and just take those down and I will have a tenon that is uh, very close to the desired size. And now I can just check it with the gauge and see if it slides nice along the length. I've got a little bit of a step right at the very end and that's probably because it's kind of hard to get in with the uh, skew chisel so I'll come back and clean that up right now. And that looks really good there and all the way along its length. The proof, as they say, is in the pudding, so I want to check the fit of the tenon in the drilled hole. And what I'm looking for is a tenon that goes together with some resistance. I certainly don't want to have to beat on it, but I also want it to be able to hold together under its own weight. Now, in the case of this one, as I stated before, since it's wedged, the uh, tolerances are greater, but still I want to have a good fit. So let's give it a try here. And I want to make sure that when I have it fully driven home, that the slot for the wedge is across the grain, not with the grain, so they don't potentially split the subtop. And this is feeling good. See, it's got I got to twist it a little bit to get to go together. Maybe more than I thought. No, that's good there. And it drops together and it stays together under its own weight. So I'm quite satisfied with that. I want to thank you for watching this short video, and I hope that maybe you'll incorporate this technique into your shop.